Inferential statistics are called inferential statistics because they allow us to make an inference. They allow us to make a decision about whether we accept or reject the null hypothesis. And we do that on the basis of whether or not the statistical test achieves significance. Usually, is p less than or equal to 0 0.05? Now, in order to um, be able to choose a statistical test, first of all, you're going to need to know about the different experimental designs. That is to say, um, repeated measures, um, correlation, independent groups, that lot. And you're going to find that on page 184 of the CAT book. So if you need a bit of a reminder, perhaps go and have a look at uh, that page in the CAT book before we dive into this video. All right. Um, so... To choose a statistical test, we need to know three things. We need to know the level of measurement of the data. Is it nominal or ordinal or interval stroke ratio data? Secondly, uh, we need to know whether we're looking for a difference, uh, whether we're looking for a test of difference, if we're trying to find out if two variables are different, or a test of correlation. And thirdly, we need to know uh, the type of data uh, we're looking for. Is it independent data or is it related data? And when we know those three things, then we can choose a statistical test according to this table. So, the first choice that we have to make, decision one, what are we looking for? Is it a test of difference or a test of correlation? So, in the test in video number 20, for example, um, are psychology students more or less punctual than sociology st students? That would be a test of difference, to see if the two things are different. On the other hand, um, going back a few videos, looking at the correlation between the different teachers marking the same papers, that would obviously be a test of correlation. Decision two is whether we have related data or unrelated data. And this is where the experimental design comes in. Independent groups lead to unrelated data because... The two groups are not related to one another, they're different people. Repeated measures, on the other hand, has related data because the data comes in pairs. Each person has two scores, one for each condition. Matched pairs also gives us related data because the data comes in pairs for related data. The third decision we have to make is what level of measurement do the data represent? Have we got nominal, ordinal or interval data? And when we know those three things, we can simply choose which statistical test we, we need according to this grid. You need to learn that. You do need to learn that and you can and will get asked a question where you have to name a statistical test that you could use and say why it's appropriate. So um, let's have a think, uh, shall we, about um, the uh, statistical test that we would use on the experiment in video number 20 about whether psychology students or sociology students have the better uh, record of punctuality. Let's have a think about which statistical test we'd use. Well, first of all, it's a test of difference, isn't it? Decision one is, is, is easy. We're looking to see if psychology students are different from sociology students or not. Secondly, is it a related design or an unrelated design? Well, I had two classes meeting at the same time on a Monday morning one group of psychology students and another separate group of sociology students. So that's obviously unrelated data, isn't it? Because it's independent groups. And thirdly, I need to know um, what level of measurement I'm using. So 
um, it is that I was looking on Sims to find out if they were late or not, and that's in categories, isn't it? Either they're late or they're not. And so that's nominal data. So looking on this table, I can see that the test I need is chi-squared. OK, now you're not going to have to calculate statistical tests in, in this exam, so that's great. But you will have to be able to show that you, you know how to use them. So let's have a look at that. Let's go back to my little experiment on psychology and sociology students. And I got some data from that experiment, didn't I, which is here, that I got 20 out of uh, 24 of my psychology students were punctual and 15 out of 19 of my uh, sociology students were punctual on that particular Monday morning. Right, so I calculated chi-squared for this and it came out that chi-squared is 0.134. You don't need to be able to calculate that. And the degrees of freedom is 1. You don't need to be able to calculate that. I just did it with a calculator using the instructions in the dog book but do you know what there's actually a whole load of um, online calculators that can do chi-squared for you and all the other statistics and it's really worth having a bit of a fiddle around with those and play with them because um, they, they teach you a load about statistics just 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 messing around with the online calculators is is uh, is great anyway you're not going to have to do it in the exam so let's not worry about it in the exam it will tell you the outcome of the statistical calculation. In other words, it will give you that chi-squared is 0.134 and that the degrees of freedom are 1. Right, so how do we proceed from there? What we do is we look it up, look up the critical value on a statistical table, like this one from the dog book. Okay, the first thing we need to know, what are our degrees of freedom? We calculated it as 1, and that shows us that we're just using the first row in this table. Not interested in the figures underneath, just the first row there. Secondly, we want to know what level of significance are we going to choose. Well, we're going to choose 0.05, that's the one that we always default to, unless, for example, we're doing medical research or replicating a previous study, in which case we might use a more stringent level of significance, 0.01, but we're going to go for 0.05 today. And thirdly, we want to know, are we doing the two-tailed test or the one-tailed test? Well, to know that, we need to know, is it a directional hypothesis or a non-directional hypothesis? Now then, I've got a vague idea that psychology students might be more punctual than sociology students, but in actual fact there's no prior research on that question. So I'm going to go for the non-directional hypothesis because it could be that sociologists are more punctual than psychologists and it could be the other way around. So that shows that I'm using the two-tailed test and there's the 0.05 level and I can read down that column and I can see that the critical value of chi-square that I'm looking for is 3.84. Okay, the observed value is 0.134, the critical value is 3.84. Right, underneath the table it says that the observed value of chi-square must be equal to or greater than the critical value in this table for significance to be shown. Now clearly that statement is not true because the observed value 0.134 is a lot less than the critical value 3.84 so significance is not shown. In other words I have to accept the null hypothesis that any differences between the psychologists and the sociologists is just down to chance. Well, there were differences between the psychologists and the sociologists, weren't there? The psychologists were, were slightly more punctual than the sociologists. But what the chi-squared test is telling me 
is the chances of getting those results just by chance, the probability of getting those results just randomly is greater than 5%. So it's not significant and I'm going to accept the null hypothesis and say that the likelihood is, is that that difference in the results there is just down to chance. You don't have to calculate statistics in this exam. You do just have to know how to interpret.